Hello and welcome to another Motion Industries how-to video. My name is Tom Clark and on today's how-to, it's a version we like to call Tom's Toolbox. And we're going to be talking about new motor legislation. You ready? Okay, good. We're going to have a test at the end of this. No, not really. We won't do that. You know, on March 9th of 2010, the U.S. Department of Energy issued what is known as the final rule to 10 CFR Part 31 Energy Conservation Program, Energy Conservation Standards for Small Electric Motors. The rule mandates certain efficiencies for motors effective March 9th of 2015. Now, after this date, motor manufacturers will not be allowed to produce non-compliant motors covered by this legislation for use in the United States. Any motor built prior to this date and in inventory will be allowed to be sold and used. Motors mounted to machinery and imported into the U.S. are also covered by this rule and must be compliant by March 9th, 2015. The small motor rule covers NEMA two-digit frame motors, 42 to 56 frames, and IEC equivalents, IEC 63 through 80 frames, for open drip-proof general purpose motors in both single and three-phase designs, one-quarter through 3HP and KW equivalents, with two, four, and six pole speeds operating from 60 hertz with less than 600 volts. So, you may ask, what is general purpose as defined by the DOE? Well, it's found within paragraphs MG1 through 1.05 of NEMA MG1 1987, which provides a list of characteristics that define a motor as general purpose. Now, these characteristics include the following elements that DOE considered for purposes and defining a motor as general purpose. Number one, we start with built with an open construction. Must be rated for continuous duty incorporates the service factor in MG1 through 12.47 or MG1 1987. A DOE clarified that they include the service factor up to and including the numbers shown here that are on the chart on the screen. Next up, uses insulation that satisfies at least the minimum Class A insulation system temperature rise specifications detailed in MG1 through 12.42 or MG1 1987. Next up, must be designed in standard ratings, HP or KW ratings, has standard operating characteristics, has standard mechanical construction, is designed for use under usual service conditions, and is not restricted to a particular application. The small motor rule covers electrical motor designs, mechanical designs, motor enclosure, thermals, and stock and custom motors. The small motor rule states that only three types of motors can qualify as NEMA general purpose motors and therefore are considered small electric motors as defined in the 2010 final rule. Now these motors are number one, capacitor start induction run motors or CSIR. Number two, capacitor start capacitor run, CSCR, and polyphase motors. The required average efficiency levels for various motor types are shown in the appendix. Uh, split phase, shaded pole, and permanent split capacitor, PSC motors, do not qualify as NEMA general purpose motors and therefore cannot meet the definition of a small electric motor. Motors which are designed for 50 HZ, 50 hertz only, are not covered under the small motor rule. Now, the small motor rule also covers mechanical designs. General purpose base mounted motors with and without C-face or D-flange are covered as well as footless motors. Base mounted designs also include motors with resilient mounting bases with the exception of single and three phase one third to one HP with ATO four pole MG1 part 18, which are exempt. The DOE has added motors with longer than NEMA shafts. Now the shaft shall have a flat or keyway. Special purpose shafts, such as 56J, are not covered as they are designed for a particular application. Motors with non-NEMA BA dimensions are included. These are often the result of adding a C-face to standard motor in Mod Express or even some custom configurations. As far as motor enclosure goes, only open drip proof designs are covered. Open air over or enclosed designs are not covered by the small motor rule. Following so far? Okay, good. Now, when we speak of thermals, we're not talking about thermostats, but either manual or automatic thermal overloads. These may be either UL recognized or not. Now, if they are not UL recognized, the motor using these must be compliant by March 9th, 
of 2015. If the thermals are UL recognized, we're allowed extra time for certification and the motors must be compliant by March 9th of 2017. Stock and custom motors are also mentioned in the small motor rule. Now, some manufacturers such as Baldor Electric, well, they've been ahead of this legislation and have included a new section of motors with bases and C-face with bases which are compliant to the small motor rule. These are single and three-phase motors. The small motor rule went into effect on March 9th of 2015. This rule impacted two-digit frame single-speed induction motors. Uh, customers who use motors covered by this rule are encouraged to work with their local Baldor district office to convert to the new design as soon as possible. Uh, the higher efficiency requires more active material, which makes the new motors larger in size. Uh, customers using single-phase motors may see some ratings change from capacitor start induction run to capacitor start, capacitor run designs, adding a much larger capacitor box and even a larger motor diameter. Now in this case, an enclosed motor, which is not covered by the small motor rule, may be a more suitable solution if there are size restraints. Woo, did you get all that? Good, just make sure that you communicate, talk back and forth if the motor is smaller or bigger, may have to change sizes, may have to do something. It's just best to have good communication. You know, you notice we didn't have any need for um, uh, PPE today? Yeah, but you know, you know the rule. You always make sure you have PPE for the appropriate job, whatever it calls for. If you have any questions about that or about anything you've seen here today, contact your local Motion Industries representative and they're going to help you out. I promise. Also, be on the lookout for more MI How To's and Tom's Toolbox videos with me, Tom Clark, as your host. Thanks for watching today.